Hello and welcome to today's video as we spend the year making our way through the Sermon on the Mount, trying to understand these famous words of Jesus and to commit them to memory. So today we are in the final part of our little six-part mini-series uh, looking at the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Thank you for joining us. We will look at the final two lines of the prayer today. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So today I'm going to break this, these two lines into three short parts. We're going to look at lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I want to show you today that the whole prayer, um, this part, as well as the other parts, are grounded in the story of Israel uh, and that Jesus' life and ministry was so shaped by. So let's start by talking about lead us. Now, firstly, let's remember that this is Jesus' prayer that he is inviting us to pray with him. It is the Lord's Prayer. So Jesus is praying that he would not be led into temptation, and he invites us to pray the same thing with him. And before we talk about what we mean by being led into temptation, let's pause to think quickly about being led by God. God is often portrayed in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, as leading. He is the shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, it says in Psalm 23. He leads me beside quiet waters. And in the foundational story of, of Israel's identity, God leads Israel out of Egypt. He leads them from Egypt and through the wilderness as a pillar of fire and smoke. And as he leads them, he chooses the course of their journey. There's this little line in the Exodus story uh, that I'll pop up on the screen in a second, but this is a really, you might miss this, it's so small, but it's actually so helpful to think about this. After the people leave Egypt, it says, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. So here we go. In this story, God is choosing their course. He is aware of their weakness and he is guiding their course. And we pause just for a moment to, to think about the same thing for us. God leads us and he, he leads us along the course that he chooses for our lives. Just reflect on that for a moment. He leads us along the course of his choosing. Now we pray, lead us not into temptation. What do we mean when we pray that we are led not into temptation? Because this sounds like God is intending to lead us into temptation and we have to ask him not to, which seems a bit odd to me. But the issue here comes down to that word temptation, the word that's translated as temptation. Um, as we've seen many times throughout the Lord's Prayer, the traditional language of the first English translation, the King James Version, has been kept because it has such a huge impact on yeah, the broader English, English language. Uh, but languages don't stay the same. And temptation used to mean something very different from what it now means. Temptation used to be uh, a, a word that was synonym, synonymous with, with trial or test. But now the meaning of temptation has shifted, you know, it's 400 years time, and the meaning has shifted to mean something like being lured to do something that we shouldn't do. And so this word in the prayer, simply put, it's just more accurately translated as trial or test. So we ask God not to lead us into the test, but to deliver us from evil. So what is the test? Well, again, we come to the Hebrew Bible to find our answer. Many times in the Old Testament, God's people are presented with a test. Uh, maybe the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's in the Garden of Eden is, is the prime example of this. And the purpose of these tests is not because God likes to punish his people and he likes to catch them out and get them caught doing the wrong thing. He's giving them an opportunity to demonstrate their faithfulness to him. We talked about this a lot when we looked at the Exodus story in the Torah series that we did a couple years ago. So if you want to go back and check that out, please do, especially the videos about chapters 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 of Exodus. Now, what's interesting about Jesus's prayer 
is that he is asking God not to lead him into the test. And he's inviting us to pray the same thing, that we would not be led into the test. Uh, now, maybe you think that's strange, uh, that God would give these tests and then Jesus would teach us to pray that we would not be led into these tests. Um, but again, think of the example that I gave you before of God leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. Uh, just read this again and think about how God is not leading them into a test. God did not lead them through the road, uh, lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, that war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. You see what's happening here. God is not leading Israel into that testing situation because God knows their limitations. God knows that we are limited in our capacity. And so we can pray that God would not lead us into these sorts of tests. And we should pray that. Lead us not into temptation or lead us not into these tests. But if you've lived on this uh, planet for, for more than a couple hours, you will know that tests inevitably arise. We cannot avoid them all. Uh, for Israel leaving Egypt, God might have redirected them around Philistine country, but he led them through the wilderness where they would be tested many times. And even in Jesus's own life, he faces many tests. Like I said, Jesus's life and ministry is shaped on that of Israel in the Old Testament. And there are a few prime examples of tests in Jesus's life, like his time in the wilderness, uh, where he's faced with uh, the evil one tempting him. But also there was his night in the garden of Gethsemane where he knew that death on the cross was facing him the very next day. And do you remember what he prays in that garden? He says, take this cup from me. Now, this is Jesus's lived out experience of asking God not to lead him into the test. But then what happens in that story? He is led into the test. And so... We pray, lead us not into temptation, lead us not into the test, but when we are led into the test, deliver us from the evil one. Now this line, like the one before it, and the whole prayer is dripping with Old Testament significance. Jesus himself was dripping with Old Testament significance. And so we see some more of that in this line. Deliver us is the language of the Exodus story. Again, and in that story, the Israelites are delivered from evil by God's mighty hand and his outstretched arm. Uh, the way that God delivers the Israelites, you might remember, it's, it's through many acts of deliverance. The plagues, the parting of the Red Sea. Uh, when they're in the wilderness, he guides them in that pillar of fire and smoke. Uh, he rains down food from heaven and, and, and brings water out of a rock and, and, and all of these mighty acts of de deliverance. And so the prayer ends with words that remind us, the prayers, that God, the God who we worship, is the God who is powerful to save. He has no trouble overcoming adversary. He is the one who is able to deliver us from evil. His future kingdom isn't just some long shot or a faint hope. It is a certain hope. And he will deliver us from the evil one. And he will deliver us from evil. And he will bring us into his future kingdom. And so we should pray that he would lead us not into the test, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, this brings us to the end of our little mini series, looking at the Lord's Prayer. And next week, we will continue in the Sermon on the Mount by looking at treasure in heaven and starting to deal with that theme. Uh, but I just wanted to remind you that we are here to understand the Sermon on the Mount and to memorize it. So I'm wondering how you are going with the memorizing part. I must say from my own experience so far is that my motivation for memorization has waxed and waned over the last few weeks as we've looked at such a familiar part. I said I was intending to revise, but actually I've uh, just gotten lazy. So um, this week, recommitting to memorizing, uh, going back over what we have already learned, and I want to encourage you to do the same thing. So let's start right now as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.